In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to install VirtualBox on your Mac computer. The first thing you'll need to do, of course, is to download VirtualBox. And to do that, you simply go to virtualbox.org. So that's all one word, virtualbox.org. And when you come to their home page, then on the left, you'll see a link to downloads. You'll click that. And then under VirtualBox Platform Packages, there is one here for OS 10 and all you'll do is slide over to the link for the OS 10 download then left click to begin the download and the download begins now another thing you're going to want to do when you download is to make sure you get number one the correct file and number two that you get all of that file and not just a partial file because of some network or internet problem and also that number three that the file on its way down to you hasn't picked up some sort of a Trojan or some sort of malware so there is a way that we can check that whenever the provider of these files in this case VirtualBox whenever they put these files up here available for you to download then if they are a reputable company like VirtualBox is then what they'll do is they'll provide for you something that's called a checksum and so here there's the SHA-256 checksum and then they also provide an MD5 SHA is a little bit better so we'll just click here on SHA-256 and what we see is wow a lot of numbers and things that sort of overwhelm us if you're not familiar with what you're looking at each one of these rows represents a different product so for instance this top item up here is for their virtual box extension pack 4.3.28 and so on and so right on down the line in here we find the one that we just downloaded which is the download for OS 10 and then right beside it here this is the actual SHA-256 checksum hash value that we're going to try to find now whenever we run these checksum values if you're not familiar with the command line and a lot of people uh, are not comfortable using the command line tools like this where that will do things like change to the downloads directory and then try to list the files that are there if you're not familiar with typing command lines then there is an option for you and it is a product called hashtab and this is a great little program you can put it on windows or mac and to get it you go to implbits that's i m p l b i t s i m P like Paul L B like boy I T S dot com so implebits.com and here you'll see hash tab when you come here there's a download button but notice that this is for Windows so this button here will not do you any good on a Mac when you read this little light blue box here it says that hash tab is free for Windows but it's not free for Mac there's no free download so what they do is they tell you here to go to the App Store and try to find it in the App Store and they say that it costs as much as a really good donut so it's a fairly inexpensive file so just go to to the App Store and when you come here type in hash tab right here do a search and you'll find hash tab and then you'll have the opportunity here to just download it and purchase it I believe a couple of bucks it's not very expensive at all and then download it and install it now once you have the file downloaded then we'll be able to check this check some value to make sure that the file that we downloaded is in fact the correct file that it's all there no problems so we'll come here to downloads and there is the file that we have the one that we downloaded and what I'm going to do in order to do the check some value with hash tab I'm going to show you that if you use the command line to run the check some hash on this then you have to manually compare the value that you'll get here let me just run that real quick open SSL space SHA-256 space and then the name of the file which is virtual it's all of this file right up here you see that's a big long thing I want to type all that and fortunately in the command line we can just type part of the name and then hit tab and it will auto complete the rest of that file so we'll hit enter it calculates the value and so we can see here that our value is going to begin with 16 EF 55298 
and we look down here and we can see that it's 16 EF 59 and then it keeps going and then it ends with C4 triple E AC2 so we look down here and there is C4 triple E AC2 so we know that it ends with a correct value we know that it begins with a correct value you can pretty well assume that it's then the correct file but see I have to do a manual check whenever I use the command line the command itself is very simple very straightforward open SSL space SHA-256 uh, SHA-256 space and then the file name but if I use the hash tab to check this value I can just golly just copy the whole file all of that copy it put it all into memory and then just come to finder right click come to services after you installed hash tab and you'll see something called file hashes just click it and hash tab will open and run and since you put all of these hashes into memory then whenever hash tab runs the SHA-256 hash to see if the file that's on your computer is exactly bit for bit the same as the file that was on the server then you'll get a little green check mark and it's all good to go now just to let you know that there are other tests that you can run this is the SHA-256 remember on the VirtualBox website they also offer the MD5 well all you have to do then in hash tab is you click on the little blue circle with the eye on it and you'll see here that there's lots of different options you could run the SHA-512 maybe or the here's the MD5 check that the more you check the longer it will take to process the values two won't really hurt it but if you check several like if it select all it'll take you a long time to get all of those results so best practice is is to select uh, just the one that you need and then to run it against that one file and then whenever you get the green check mark then you know that the file that you have on your computer is identical to the file that was on the server you got the right file you got all of that file and it's not corrupt with any sort of Trojan virus or whatever that got attached to it on its way uh, down to you. So what we'll do now since we know we've got the file, we got the correct file and it's a good file, we'll simply double click to install. On our next screen we'll see the virtualbox.pkg file, double click, we'll click continue and then continue again and then install. Password. As soon as the file is installed then we'll click close close these other windows. I use Alfred to open files. So I'll type now virtual box. There it is. Enter. And there we see virtual box installed and ready to go on our computer.